Hello and welcome. I'm Chris. This is no wait. This direction. This is Steve. <laughs> always get this wrong every single time. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, located in Germany. Steve is located in Canada in Toronto, and uh, um, we are talking to each other using a system that Steve actually developed. It's called Video Ninja, and this video's purpose is to give you a little head start, a little. Uh, just to, I want to explain what it is. I'll ask nosy questions to Steve because I don't know everything about the system, but I've used it for years now. Um, and uh, we want to give a quick demonstration of just some of the basic functionality so you can get started as quick as possible. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. All right. Let's uh, kick this. What is Video Ninja? Well, first of all, Video Ninja, V-D-O dot Ninja is... Um, as you said, it's not an acronym. It's just the way it's pronounced. <laughs> it means words, video yeah. ninja, right? <laughs> and it I... is, in its simplest form, it's a system that transports video and audio from A to B. And it does that in a browser. And uh, ideally, well, and it, it uses a browser to capture on the sending side, and it uses a browser to display on the receiving side as we will not be able to explain everything that the system can do and does because it is really extensive and it does a lot of things but um that is one of its basic functionalities and i think the main functionality to get video from a to b um and to do this in a good as good as possible quality and in an as short as possible time with as low as possible latency so we're talking we we can have a a fluid discussion, even though we're in different continents and uh, the signal goes half halfway around the world, because what Video Ninja does it, it is it sends the video point to point. Right now, it sends my video to Steve's browser um, directly from browser to browser. There's no like, uh, let's say with Skype or Zoom or so or other systems. There's always a central server that ingests and spits it out to all the participants in a in a conference, um, which takes time and processing. Um, here in this case, there is no intermediary. It's just a point to point connection. Am I right so far? Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. So that leads to short latencies. We we have a, a, a way less than half a second latency here. I'd say it's probably in the 100 to 200 milliseconds. So that really uh, works well to uh, keep a good discussion going. And at the same time, Steve can pull video and audio from me and uh, from both of us and um, and do that in a, in a super high quality. I mean, really, really excellent quality. Um, you can hear this in, in the sound. You can hear this, see this in the video. Um, works really well by the way works best in chrome very important chrome uh, this is based on the web rtc protocol which is best implemented in the chrome browser so if you uh, want to use this chrome is the safest bet um, there's a couple of chromium based browsers that work well too um, but um, i'm on a mac you are on a win you, steve is on windows um i'm doing this in chrome browser safari on the mac not ideal that it lacks a couple of things it's moving forward quickly but still not quite there so chrome it is um let's talk about a couple of important concepts here and uh, the first one is um is the room it's kind of the, the basic central block where things come together is a room a room in video ninja is basically just a url that you put in a browser you invite the guests they all use pretty much the same url they all end up in the room the room comes into existence the moment it's being used when the last person leaves the room it just disappears you don't have to set anything up you don't need any passwords well if you if you want, you can, but by default, you don't. Um, you don't need any setup. You don't need to s install any software apart from uh, having a Chrome browser. That's pretty much all you need. So the room is where people can meet. And that's what we're doing right now here. Steve and I are in a yep. room, um, which means we both use the same URL to join that room. And then the system asks you to 
select your camera, to select your microphone, to select your speaker or headphones or whatever you're using. And um, then you click join or start, and that's it. You're in that room. So another important thing that the system um, does is as it is, well, it can act as a as a conference kind of system, even though that's not what it was made for. It is a production system, right? It is made for video production. Absolutely. There's a focus on the director and control right. over the guests. So uh, for that purpose, there's also uh, for each room that, that you create, and again, you, you pretty much get the room into existence by choosing a name for it and putting that in your in your browser pretty much. Um, so for that room, there is also a director's view, which um, Steve, can you pull that up? Um, Absolutely. It's pretty much the one of the control centers behind the scenes. So you let's say you have a bunch of people. You want to record a podcast with uh, two people, um, which is pretty much what we're doing right now. So um, if you look at the director's view for those two people, that's what you see. That's uh, an interface with some boxes on it. There's these tiles with uh, each of the guests on them. And uh, there's a lot of buttons to control the guests like... I don't know, mute them, uh, turn off their cameras, um, transfer them to a different room, even though this is quite advanced already. But um, as simple as as this, you have a, a room with people in it. By the way, there are uh, limitations because Video Ninja does not use a central server a central distribution hub kind of thing as other systems um, it means that each system is kind of sending video to all the other systems um, so um, it, it does not explode because there is a mechanism built in to kind of keep the data rates um, as low as possible between the participants but just just as a as a rule of thumb, I'd say maybe about ten people in a room is uh, is reasonable. Fifty people in a room, at this point, not quite there. There are mechanisms to work around it. Steve is probably developing like secret weapons in the background <laughs> every day to to mitigate these things. But I'd say up to ten people in a room is is a reasonable number that you can do. Um, so how do we get things out of a room into, um, let's say into OBS or vMix or whatever other thing you want to use to, uh, to record your podcast? Um, there is another concept next to the room and the director. There is a scene or there are different kinds of scenes, but there's a default scene in the director. You can just copy that from like one of those top boxes. Copy. And yep. And if you if you if you copy that scene link, which by default is automatically mixing everyone who joins that room, um, uh, mixes them into one output scene in decent quality. Um, if you paste that into a different browser or into a browser source in vMix or in, in OBS, um, then you get an automatically mixed scene with all the participants in that room. So that's uh, what should be on the screen now yep yep and if you there mute that <laughs> yeah well it, it it transports audio and everything so um so here is a scene that doesn't look that different from what you saw just now but now it is a scene that could be living in obs in video uh in, in vmix in whichever other production system you use um there are defaults for video bit rates, for quality settings, and so on. But um, those can be extended quite a bit. So um, the defaults are already very, very good in terms of quality. So I wouldn't typically change anything there. But um, if you want to go higher, we're talking 1080p up to 4K video. Um, we're talking 30 or 60 frames per second. We're talking studio quality audio. This is uh, Video Ninja uses uh, the Opus codec in the background, which is is very capable of transmitting studio quality audio um, in bit rates. Well, 512 kilobits. 
Um, and that's the max uh, audio bit rate. Which you don't uh, even need with uh, with Opus. I think 128 or 64 is usually plenty good for, for a voice. So it sounds, yeah, like we're in the same room. So um, that is just a little like t taste of um, what it can do and how it does it. So again, the concepts are there's a room that people meet in. There's a director's view or control. Is there an official term? I'm not sure. I think we, it keeps changing. So <laughs> I suppose it changes a bit, yeah. It's a director's room, which allows you to, as a director, to to modify things. To f You can even go as far as choosing the guest's microphone. Like if they are not very techy, you could go in there and say, okay, let me choose the camera for you and the microphone for you. And the guest will be prompted, uh, is the director allowed to... Um, to change your microphone and so you could change the tech on the on the guest side even from here if uh if you need to there's like again this this would take days to go into all the details which is the reason there is a great documentation so the main url is video ninja vdo dot ninja um there is a documentation link that is docs d-o-c-s dot video dot ninja um, there is the main GitHub at github.video.ninja. Um, let me see, did I forget anything? Oh, and of course the Discord. Um, I think that's kind of the main communication thing. If you need support for your, I don't know, uh, for your Windows setup, for your Mac setup, for uh, different aspects of the system, that is where you will find others to help you. Um, Steve is usually there. Um, I'm there sometimes. And uh, with that, I hope we managed to give you a bit of an overview. Is there anything anything on the surface that I should have mentioned and didn't, Steve? Uh, I'm not sure. It's free. Um, it's free, yeah. It's free, it's <laughs> privacy focused, it's uh it works even on a smartphone. So but people people use it. Let's look at a few use cases. Um you do a recording uh, of a podcast or you some people use it to simply take their smartphone and turn it into a webcam because that's what you can do with the system. You can bring your video from your smartphone into uh into a room or into a scene. Um what else do people do with it? There, there are VTubers uh, in Japan VTubers. who use it. There's like this is this is really interesting to see um, if the moment you give people a system that can do a lot of things. And again, this is a Swiss Army knife. We really merely scratch the surface. Uh, if you give people a system, they will come up with interesting use cases. So. Um, it's worth digging in. It's worth joining the Discord, asking questions. There are um, plenty of people who use that system on a daily basis and uh, use it for serious productions. This is not a toy. This is being used by, um, we're not naming names, but by some major corporations and so on. So this is um, this is a system that has legs and it is, um, it's amazing what it can do. So. With that, let's uh, let's end this video. Um, go check out the docs. Go check out the Discord, and uh, we are going to record a couple more with a bit more details and a bit uh, a bit a bit of a deeper look into some of the areas. I'm Chris. This I'm is Steve. Steve. No, this is Steve. See you <laughs> in the next one.